Characteristic rock hi-hat pattern. Play a cymbal is a common percussion instrument. Often used in pairs, cymbals consist of thin, normally round plates of various alloys. The majority of cymbals are of indefinite pitch, although small disc-shaped cymbals based on ancient designs sound a definite note. Cymbals are used in many ensembles ranging from the orchestra, percussion ensembles, jazz bands, heavy metal bands, and marching groups. Drum kits usually incorporate at least a crash, ride, or crash-slash-ride, and a pair of hi-hat cymbals. A player of cymbals is known as a cymbalist. Ancient Greek bronze cymbal, 5th century BC, National Archaeological Museum, Athens a musician playing cymbal in a musical ensemble, the 8th century bar leaf of Borobudur Temple, Central Java, Indonesia a pair of bronze cymbals from the Chinese Jin dynasty the word cymbal is derived from the Latin symbol which is the Latinization of the Greek word kappa mu beta alpha lambda omicron nu kimbalon, symbol, which in turn derives from kappa mu beta eta kim, cup, bowl. In orchestral scores, symbols may be indicated by the French symbols, German becken, shell becken, teller, or chinellin, Italian piatti or sinelli, and Spanish platillos. Many of these derive from the word for plates. Symbols have existed since ancient times. Representations of symbols may be found in reliefs and paintings from Armenian highlands, Larsa, Babylon, Assyria, ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, and ancient Rome. References to symbols also appear throughout the Bible, through many psalms and songs of praise to God. Symbols may have been introduced to China from Central Asia in the 3rd or 4th century AD. In India, symbols have been in use since ancient times and are still used across almost all major temples and Buddhist sites. Gigantic artists along the Ganges which are revered by Hindus all over the world, are incomplete without large symbols. Symbols were employed by Turkish Janissaries in the 14th century or earlier. By the 17th century, such symbols were used in European music, and more commonly played in military bands and orchestras by the mid-18th century. Since the 19th century, some composers have called for larger roles for symbols in musical works, and a variety of symbol shapes, techniques, and hardware have been developed in response. The anatomy of the symbol plays a large part in the sound it creates. A hole is drilled in the center of the symbol, which is used to either mount the symbol on a stand or for tying straps through. The bell, dome, or cup is the raised section immediately surrounding the hole. The bell produces a higher pinging pitch than the rest of the symbol. The bow is the rest of the surface surrounding the bell. The bow is sometimes described in two areas, the ride and crash area. The right area is the thicker section closer to the bell while the crash area is the thinner tapering section near the edge. The edge or rim is the immediate circumference of the symbol. Symbols are measured by their diameter either in inches or centimeters. The size of the symbol affects its sound, larger symbols usually being louder and having longer sustain. The weight describes how thick the symbol is. Symbol weights are important to the sound they produce and how they play. Heavier symbols have a louder volume, more cut, and better stick articulation. Thin symbols have a fuller sound, lower pitch, and faster response. The profile of the symbol is the vertical distance of the bow from the bottom of the bell to the symbol edge. The profile affects the pitch of the symbol, higher profile symbols have higher pitch. Symbols offer a composer nearly endless amounts of color and effect. Their unique timbre allows them to project even against a full orchestra and through the heaviest of orchestrations and enhance articulation in nearly any dynamic. Symbols have been utilized historically to suggest frenzy, fury or bacchanalian revels, as seen in the Venus music in Wagner's Tannhäuser, Greek's Pier Gint Suite, and Osman's aria O We Will Ek Triumphieren from Mozart's Die and Furring aus dem Serai. A pair of clash symbols in cross-section. The bell is in green and the straps are in red. A type of crash symbols used in Assam, India. It is similar to cardal. This instrument is used in Assamese dances called bihu. Orchestral clash cymbals are traditionally used in pairs, each one having a strap set in the bell of the cymbal by which they are held. Such a pair is known as clash cymbals, crash cymbals, hand cymbals, or plates. Certain sounds can be obtained by rubbing their edges together in a sliding movement for a sizzle, striking them against each other in what is called a crash, tapping the edge of one against the body of the other in what is called a tap crash. Scraping the edge of one from the inside of the bell to the edge for a scrape or ziskin, or shutting the cymbals together and choking the sound in what is called a hi-hat or crush. A skilled percussionist can obtain an enormous dynamic range from such cymbals. For example, in Beethoven's Symphony No. 9, 
The percussionist is employed to first play cymbals pianissimo, adding a touch of color rather than loud crash. Chinese style crash cymbals in use crash cymbals are usually damped by pressing them against the percussionist's body. A composer may write less vibre or let vibrate secco or equivalent indications on the score, more usually. The percussionist must judge when to damp based on the written duration of a crash and the context in which it occurs. Crash cymbals have traditionally been accompanied by the bass drum playing an identical part. This combination, played loudly, is an effective way to accentuate a note since it contributes to both very low and very high frequency ranges and provides a satisfying crash bang wallop. In older music the composer sometimes provided one part for this pair of instruments, writing senza piatti or piatti soli if only one is needed. This came from the common practice of having one percussionist play using one cymbal mounted to the shell of the bass drum. The percussionist would crash the cymbals with the left hand and use a mallet to strike the bass drum with the right. This method is nowadays often employed in pit orchestras and called for specifically by composers who desire a certain effect. Stravinsky calls for this in his Ballet Petrushka, and Mahler calls for this in his Titan Symphony. The modern convention is for the instruments to have independent parts. However, in kit drumming, a cymbal crash is still most often accompanied by a simultaneous kick to the bass drum, which provides a musical effect and support to the crash. Crash cymbals evolved into the low sock and from this to the modern hi-hat. Even in a modern drum kit, they remain paired with the bass drum as the two instruments which are played with the player's feet. However, hi-hat cymbals tend to be heavy with little taper, more similar to a ride cymbal than to a clash cymbal as found in a drum kit, and perform a ride rather than a crash function. Another use of cymbals is the suspended cymbal. This instrument takes its name from the traditional method of suspending the cymbal by means of a leather strap or rope, thus allowing the cymbal to vibrate as freely as possible for maximum musical effect. Early jazz drumming pioneers borrowed this style of cymbal mounting during the early 1900s and later drummers further developed this instrument into the mounted horizontal or nearly horizontally mounted crash cymbals of a modern drum kit. However, most modern drum kits do not employ a leather strap suspension system. Many modern drum kits use a mount with felt or otherwise dampening fabric to act as a barrier to hold the cymbals between metal clamps, thus forming the modern-day ride cymbal. Suspended cymbals can be played with yarn, sponge, or cord-wrapped mallets. The first known instance of using a sponge-headed mallet on a cymbal is the final chord of Hector Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique. Composers sometimes specifically request other types of mallets like felt mallets or timpani mallets for different attack and sustain qualities. Suspended cymbals can produce bright and slicing tones when forcefully struck, and give an eerie transparent windy sound when played quietly. A tremolo, or roll can build in volume from almost inaudible to an overwhelming climax in a satisfyingly smooth manner. The edge of a suspended cymbal may be hit with the shoulder of a drumstick to obtain a sound somewhat akin to that of clash cymbals. Other methods of playing include scraping a coin or triangle beater rapidly across the ridges on the top of the cymbal, giving a zing sound. Other effects that can be used include drawing a bass bow across the edge of the cymbal for a sound like squealing car brakes. Ancient, Antique or tuned cymbals are much more rarely called for. Their timbre is entirely different, more like that of small handbells or of the notes of the keyed harmonica. They are not struck full against each other, but by one of their edges, and the note given in by them is higher in proportion as they are thicker and smaller. Merliotz's Romeo and Juliet calls for two pairs of cymbals, modeled on some old Pompeian instruments no larger than the hand, and tuned to F and B flat. The modern instruments descended from this line are the crotales. Hi hats. The clutch suspends the top symbol on a rod operated by a foot pedal. Symbol types include. Thanks for watching.